uniform circular motion. We have two goals for this session. We'll start by talking about circular motion and especially uniform circular motion which is circular motion with constant speed. Secondly, we'll look at the basic equation we use for uniform circular motion. So here's an object experiencing uniform circular motion going around a circle at constant speed. As it goes around the circle, does it have an acceleration? Yes or no? So now we've labeled it with the velocity vector and you can see that the velocity vector is steadily changing not its magnitude but its direction. Because the velocity changes the object has a non-zero acceleration so yes there's an acceleration. We're going to investigate what the acceleration depends on. So we'll go back to our general equation for acceleration delta v over delta t. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the acceleration of this object at the bottom of the circle. So we'll set up this vector construction where we look at the initial velocity just before it gets to the bottom, the final velocity after it has passed through the bottom, and then delta v is the difference between those two vectors. So what we see here is that delta v points straight up toward the center of the circle when the object is at the bottom and so the direction of the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. And it's always true for uniform circular motion. What else does it depend on? So let's try this vector construction again and we will double the speed. So now our vector triangle is twice the size as it was before. All sides are scaled up by a factor of two. Okay, so delta v is now twice as big. And delta t is now half as big because the object is going twice as fast. So to cover the same distance takes half the time. So the acceleration is now twice the original delta v over half of the original delta t. That's four times as big as what we had before. So the acceleration increases by a factor of four when we double the speed. In other words, the acceleration is proportional to v squared. Let's investigate the radius dependence. So now we've got a circle half the size and our vector triangle is the same as it was before. So we get the initial velocity, final velocity, same delta v as we had before originally. But the time interval to go from the green circle to the red to the purple circle is half as large, so our acceleration is now the original delta v over half the time, that's twice the original acceleration. So the acceleration increases by a factor of two when the radius goes down by a factor of two. That means the acceleration is inversely proportional to r. So we'll summarize what we call the centripetal acceleration. And that is indicated by that purple vector on the diagram there, which always points toward the center of the circle. So the acceleration for uniform circular motion is always toward the center of the circle. And the magnitude is simply v squared over r. So summarizing circular motion, uniform circular motion, the path is a circle with a radius r, circumference 2 pi r. What does uniform mean? Well, it means constant speed. So v is distance over time, 2 pi r is once around the distance. The time for once around is what we call the period, capital T. If we define an angle in radians, that is the arc length over the radius. Note that if you take an arc length in meters divided by a radius in meters, you get no units. So that really is dimensionless, but we generally give that angle a unit of radians. There are 2 pi radians in a full circle. So now we'll talk about angular velocity as opposed to just regular linear velocity. So angular velocity is the time rate at which an object sweeps out a particular angle. So those two objects we saw there going around the circle have the same angular velocity. They go through the same angle in the same time period. Now note that the speed is 2 pi over t times r, in other words 2 pi r over t, that is proportional to the radius of the circle, whereas the angular velocity is independent of the radius. Okay, so we'll look at an example where two objects have the same angular velocity, but there are different distances from the center. 
This could be two balls on a turntable, something like that. What you see is that the speed and the acceleration are both proportional to radius. Well, why should we expect that? Well, V is omega r, so we can see the speed dependence on radius. It looks at first glance like the acceleration should be inversely proportional to radius, but that's a little deceptive because V is also different for the two objects. So, if we replace V squared by omega squared r squared, we get an equation that says centripetal acceleration is omega squared r. Note that that letter is the Greek letter omega, not the w. Omega is the same for both objects, so we can see clearly the acceleration is proportional to r, not inversely proportional. Okay, however, in this case, we've got the objects going at constant, at the same speed as each other. Okay, so they're different radii, same speed, and now the one closer to the center has the larger acceleration. We expect that because now v squared over r is the appropriate form of the equation to use and goes as 1 over r. One other example, same radius but speeds differ by a factor of 2. The accelerations differ by a factor of 4 in that case. And again, that's because of v squared over r. Same radius but one speed is twice as big as the other. You square that to a factor of 4. Okay, so we'll just go over the general method for solving circular motion problems. We have seen this before, right? It's the same method for, as for force problems. Draw a diagram. Draw one or more free body diagrams showing all the forces. Choose a coordinate system. Make sure you align one of your coordinate axes with the direction of the acceleration. Break the forces up into x and y components. Apply Newton's second law. Now, all of that is the same as what we've done before. The key difference now is when you write out sum of all the forces equals ma in the direction which is toward the center of the circle, we're going to use, instead of a, we're going to use v squared over r. So, instead of sum of all the forces equals ma, sum of all the forces in that direction is mv squared over r. The end.